As we work towards wrapping up our conversation about probability, we're going to hit a couple extra topics that are related to probability that are kind of interesting in application. The first of those is going to be counting. And I know you're thinking, I already know how to count. But we're not so much talking about how to count as much as we are focusing on counting efficiently. So we're going to answer, answer the question, how do we count the number of possibilities? And there's a couple counting rules that are going to help us do this efficiently. The first we're going to call the basic counting rule. Which basically says that if I want to select one of m options, and one of n options, the total number of possibilities is m times n. Or in other words, we just multiply the number of possibilities together for each individual decision. And then we'll get the total number of possibilities for all the decisions. So for example, if a bookshelf has 18 novels and 13 books of poetry, The question is, how many ways could a person select one of each? And the way we can answer this is we'll set up a space for every decision and put the number of options for those decisions in the space. So we need to choose a novel and a poetry book. Well, there are 18 novels, and there are 13 poetry books. So to get the total number of possibilities, we just multiply those together to get 234 different ways that we can select a novel and a book on poetry. The classic example of this type of problem is a restaurant. that has eight appetizers eleven main courses and five desserts how many different meals exist And again, we'll do one space for every decision that needs to be made. We're going to choose an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert. There are eight appetizers, 11 main courses, and five desserts. So to get the total number of meals, we just multiply 8 times 11 times 5 to find out there are 444 possible dishes that can be made. That's the basic counting rule. Now, uh, often we're not just counting possibilities, but we need to not only count them, but also arrange them. And so this brings up our second strategy for counting. And that's if we have to arrange all the items. And before we talk about an example, the way we calculate arranging all the items is we use what's called a factorial where you'll see something, some number with an explanation mark after it. That means factorial. So in factorial, how that's calculated is we take the number n, 
we multiply by one less than it, times another one less, times another one less, all the way down till three, two, one. So for example, five factorial means five times everything below it. Five times four times three times two times one, which is equal to 120. And we can actually do these on our calculator really fast. If you have a TI 83 or 84 or similar calculator, there's a button on the screen that says math. And if you select math and scroll over to the probability option, you'll see the factorial option under the probability menu. So you could type in 5, math, probability, factorial. And when you hit Enter, it'll give you 121 or 120. If you have a regular scientific calculator like a TI-30, there's probably just a probability button. And when you click the probability button, you'll see you can scroll over to the explanation points. So you could type in one, uh, you could type in five, probability, factorial, and enter. It'll give you the 120. We're going to use a couple options today that are under that probability menu. Factorial is one of them. And let's use it to answer the question, how many ways can six people stand in a line? Well, we want to arrange all six people. Because it's arranging all of them, we can use the factorial to calculate it. 6 factorial. And I can do that on my calculator under the probability menu or with the probability button. And when I do 6 factorial on my calculator, we get 720 for the total number of ways we can arrange 6 people in a line. Now, the problem with factorial, though, is it requires us to arrange everybody. And sometimes we don't need to arrange everybody. We just need to arrange some of them not quite all of them. So our third counting strategy is when we want to arrange our items out of n options. In other words, we might have a group of 10, and we're going to select three of them. But what's really important is we're arranging them, which means specifically that the order matters. If the order matters and we're only selecting some, not all of them, we're going to use what is called a permutation. And notationally, you'll see a permutation as n as a subscript, big letter P, and then R as a subscript, which has the formula n factorial divided by n minus R factorial. So for example, if I wanted to do 5 permutation 2, in other words, I've got five things, and I want to select two of them where the order matters. We would take the n factorial, or 5 factorial, divided by the difference. 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial to get 20. And again, you can do this on the calculator. Under the probability menu, again, the probability menu is either under the math button on the 83 or 84, or if you're on the TI-30, there is a probability button specifically on the calculator. And one of the options is the permutation. But the way you use it is you have to type in the first number. Then you go to the probability menu to select the NPR option. And then you do the second number. And when you hit Enter, it should give you that 20. So let's try an example. Let's say how many ways could an 11 member club elect a president 
vice president and secretary. Here, we're not selecting all 11 members. All 11 members would be a factorial. But we're only selecting three members, president, vice president, and secretary. It's also important to note that the order matters. For example, if Juan is the president, that's different than if Juan is the secretary. If Maria is the vice president, that's different than if Maria is the president. Because the order matters, we have this permutation result where we have 11 members. That's the N. And we're going to do a permutation where three of them are selected. And if I go on my calculator and do 11, go to the probability menu, permutation 3, you'll find out there are 990 ways for this club to select a president, vice president, and secretary. Now, with this example of permutations, I've been making a big deal about the order matters, because the formula is slightly different if we're just selecting three people, and it doesn't matter the order. In that case, we're doing something slightly different. Our last counting rule we're going to take a look at is how we can choose our items out of in options. And here we're just choosing them. We're not arranging them. The order does not matter here. And the way we do this is what is called a combination. We've got this formula of n CR, where we're going to choose R out of n items. And the formula is really similar to the permutation formula, n factorial over n minus R factorial. But there's an extra R factorial in the denominator that accounts for the order not mattering. So for example, if I want, had five things and I wanted to choose two of them, and the order didn't matter, choosing them first or second, no difference we would have 5 factorial over r factorial, which is 2 factorial, times n minus r. 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial. And if you work that out, we end up with 10 ways that two people can be chosen out of a group of 5. Very similar on the calculator. The combination is actually right next to the permutation under the probability menu in your calculator. If you're on the TI-83 or 84, you first have to hit the math button. On the TI-30, there's a probability button. But you type in the N first, then the NCR button, then the, two, the R button, then the R, which is 2. And if you do 5 NCR2, you'll see your calculator gives you 10 for that combination. So let's do one last example for counting a large number of things. In 2019, the US Senate had 47 Democrats and let's say they needed to select eight of them to serve on a committee. Notice here we're not choosing leadership. We're not choosing responsibilities. We're just saying who's going to serve on the committee. In this case, it doesn't matter which order you get assigned to the committee. If you're the first one assigned, the fifth one assigned, or the eighth one assigned, you're part of the committee. It doesn't matter. There's no difference. So because the order does not matter here, we have a combination where there are 47 Democrats, and we're going to choose eight of them. And if you do 47 combination eight on your calculator, you'll find out there are 314 million 457,495 different ways these eight people can be selected to serve on the committee from the 47 Democrats. 
The nice part about these formulas for counting is it makes it much more efficient. It would be a pain to count all of those options. We've talked about four counting strategies today in this video. The first is the basic counting rule, where we just multiply the options. The second is the factorial, where we can arrange all of the items. The third was the permutation, where we arrange some of the items and the order does matter. And the last was the combination, where we arrange some of, the, uh, some of the items and the order does not matter. Go ahead and practice some of these on the homework assignment. Let me know if you have any questions. And good luck to you as you count.